Are you ready for the quantum age? Humanity's next step in evolution? Dream Vision 7 Radio Network invites you to the extraordinary platform of evolutionary voices for the quantum age. Let's explore. Learn more about this upcoming age where we bridge science with spirituality. Where potentiality meets reality. Where we take compassion into action. Our trailblazers and visionaries will ask the whys, the what ifs, while igniting continuous possibility. Come along with us into an age beyond what we know today, where we can grow together in unity consciousness. Experience evolutionary voices for the quantum age, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern on DreamVision7Radio.com. Welcome to What's in Your Way is the Way with your host, Mary O'Malley, inviting you to open to the radical notion that in your life, whatever you perceive to be in your way is the way. In other words, your challenges, whether they be relationships, compulsions, finances, or illness, come with gifts embedded in them that can bring healing and allow you to experience the joy of being fully alive. Mary is a counselor, awakening mentor, inspirational speaker, and the author of What's in the Way is the Way, the gift of our compulsions, belonging to life, and the magical gift of aliveness. What's in Your Way is the Way with Mary O'Malley is part of Evolutionary Voices for the Quantum Age. Heard Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern on the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Welcome. To what's in your way is the way. I am your host, Mary O'Malley, and today we'll be exploring the joy of no control. So as you hear that, just notice, you may be holding your breath when you hear that, that this is the last thing that our conditioned minds want. So I invite you all throughout this time together to just notice when you're holding your breath. And I'll try to remember to remind you and to allow a long, slow out breath and maybe two or three because that is one of the most powerful ways that you can calm down our busy, frightened minds. So when my children were young, we decided that there was a ghost that lived in our house, and her name was Elvira. And she loved socks and pens and uh, scissors, oh, especially scissors, but even liked homework. (laughs) I thought when I moved that Elvira would no longer be in my life, but I discovered that she lives in my freezer. I cook many things in bulk. I do bone broth. I do this wonderful pureed veggie soup, and I put those two together every morning for my uh, first thing I eat in the morning, and I uh, cook bulk fish and freeze it because I live a very busy life, and it's just wonderful to have already cooked uh, food, good, nutritious cooked food uh, available to my fingertips. And... After I cook all this, I very neatly put them in containers and put it in the freezer along with my ice bags and my frozen veggies and a a few frozen meals uh, for a treat. And every time I go into my freezer, things are moved around. I can't find my ice bag or my latest container of fish, or my frozen peas and carrots. And I swear, it's not me that moves them around, even though I'm the only one that uses the freezer. So it must be Elvira. (laughs) You may not have an Elvira that lives with you, but I am sure that you've noticed this uncontrollability of life. You clean a drawer only to have it become disorganized. You balance your checkbook, only to have the amounts look like they have a mind of their own. Uh, You get your mate to be the way you want them to be, only to have them revert back to their normal mode. And you style your hair exactly how you want it to be, 
only to have it become messy later in the day or even just a few minutes later. One moment it seems you've got everything under control and the next moment life seems to escape the prison of your management. What do we do with this? Well, you know, if we took a hot air balloon or a drone way up and we just watched uh, humanity, we almost look like ants in an anthill, busy, 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 going from here to there to here to there. And then if we zoom in and you know, imagine maybe there's a door on the forehead of somebody and we can begin to watch. Well, maybe it's better. Imagine that there's a loudspeaker that instantaneously broadcasts out loud all of somebody's thoughts. And you will see how busy they are. We're not only busy outside of ourselves, we're busy inside of ourselves. And if you watch, if you really listen to what's being broadcast on this loudspeaker, you'll see that all of us are constantly trying to find a sense of security, a false sense of security, by trying to make life be the way we want it to be and trying to get it to stay that way. We get tight in all of this struggle of trying to control life. We get tight and we get small. We tighten our bodies. We tighten our breath. And we lose sight of our natural openness. I want you to watch inside of you how your mind clamors for lasting satisfaction. You know, it used to go to McDonald's and get a small fry. And then it goes to McDonald's and gets a medium fry. And then it goes and gets the double fry. And, you know, and it does the same thing with drinks. And then it gets a three-tiered hamburger the mind is constantly searching for something that will finally help it to be satisfied. And the sad thing is we can get to that place temporarily, but it never lasts. And this cuts us off from the satisfaction from the the connection with life that we really deeply long for so what i'm inviting you to do is to become curious about this isn't this interesting we're so busy trying to make ourselves and our lives be what we want them to be. You know, we lose 20 pounds, but then the mind wants to lose five more. And then we start fighting that, and then we find ourselves gaining the 20 pounds back plus 10 pounds more. That is what it is like to live in a mind that is constantly trying to get someplace else some place that will uh, that it imagines will bring it lasting satisfaction it's amazing you know when you begin to see that we have become so familiar with this struggling with life that we prefer the cramped space of our struggles of our holding of our attempt to control life And this cuts us off from our natural spaciousness. It cuts us off from who we truly are. I want you 
to be fascinated. I invite you to be fascinated by how much our minds refuse to open beyond themselves. Deepak Chopra says we have 65,000 thoughts a day. And whenever I say that, I just get tired. <laughs> and what I add to that is 95% of them are repeats from the day before. We think our way through our lives. And we are afraid of letting go of control just even a tiny bit so that we can open and enter into the great creative river of life. You know, there was a story told once of a man that was hanging from a rope and a, a, a wise being came and said, well, you can let go. You know, this is the control. You, you can let go. Oh, no, I can't, said the man. And then the wise man talked with him and said, well, why don't you just try letting go of one finger? And he let go of one finger and nothing happened. Oh, that's interesting. And so the wise man talked to him more and he let go of another finger. And again, it wasn't as scary as he thought it would be. And so the wise man talked him into letting go of all of his fingers except for his baby finger. And the man that was holding on said, you know, I shouldn't be able to hold on to this rope just with my baby finger, but that seems to be what is happening. And I am terrified of letting go of that final finger. But the wise man speaks truth that resonate in the innermost being of this man. And he finally lets go of the last finger, figuring this is the time that he will fall, endlessly fall and fall and fall. And nothing happens because he had been standing on the ground the whole time. That's a wonderful story because we need to hear this because because this tightness, this this manipulation, if you, you know, open that door and watch your own mind, you'll see it's always jockeying for position. It's imagining, you know, what it needs to say so somebody can really hear us. It's planning what it will never eat again so it can lose weight. It It has long doctoral dissertations of how we can get our, our mate, our loved ones to change so that finally, finally, everything will be okay. I want you to get that sense that that cuts you off from something else. There's a whole other world happening here. So one of the ways I describe it is imagine the most beautiful ocean you could imagine. And it just extends forever, and it it's just brings you just such peace and joy to be there with the ocean. And then imagine on the ocean that there is this small, opaque bubble. You can't see through it. That's where most people live. They live in a bubble of struggle. They live inside of their mind that is always trying to do life and do it right and to manipulate it in a way that finally you would know the peace you long for. And I ask you, has that ever brought you the lasting peace you long for? Of course not. Because it's all happening within your mind. Your mind can manipulate life so that for, you know, a short period of time, you can know peace. But life is a constantly changing river. One day it's easy, the next day it's difficult. One day we 